The following presentation was part of a forum entitled Impacts of Gas Drilling with High Volume Hydrofracking. The forum was held at the High School Auditorium in Trumansburg, New York on December 8, 2010, and sponsored by the following organizations, the Ulysses Gas Drilling Advisory Board, the Coalition to Protect New York, and the Committee to Preserve the Finger Lakes. In September of 2008, just one month after Cabot Oil and Gas Corporation began gas drilling in their hometown of Dimmick, Pennsylvania, Craig and Julie Sautner lost their sole source of clean water. The Pennsylvania DEP confirmed that their 500-foot deep water well had become contaminated with toxic concentrations of highly saturated methane gas, iron, magnesium, and sodium chloride. As a result, the Sautner family suffered dizziness, hives, gastrointestinal pain, and depends on daily water deliveries from the Cabot Oil and Gas Corporation. Now surrounded by over 100 gas wells, the Sautner's once bucolic residential area has become an industrial zone. Please welcome them. Hi, my name is Craig Sautner. It's my wife, Julie. We live on Carter Road in Dimmick, Pennsylvania, uh, northeast Pennsylvania. Um, this is actually water that came out of my well back in March. Okay, now, we were the lucky ones that when, when our water would turn like this because we could tell we had a problem just by what, you know, what the water looked like when we got home. Other people in the neighborhood, in, in other people... In, uh, along the road and endemic had a problem, but they didn't know about it because their water was still clear. They were, they were drinking the water. They were getting sick. They were throwing up, and they couldn't figure out what was going on, and it was because their wells were contaminated with other things. We had, this is iron that you see in there, but we have a host of other uh, things wrong with the, with the well. We got sodium. We got um, manganese. We got magnesium. We got chlor chloride. Aluminum. Aluminum, it's heavy metals, heavy metals, and we have uh, toluene or something, something that they use for um, fracking. But there's never been a proven case of uh, fracking contamination in any well. They say, you know, that's what they tell everybody. Now I'll just, I'm just going to put this over here. That way, anybody wants to look at it and get scared, and run <laughs> out of here, or whatever, you can do that, you know. But, you know, we we live like this for over two years now. It's been two years and three months that we've been living with a contaminated well. We, in the beginning there, they, um, they, they purged my well the first day. Uh, the next day when I called them up, they purged it. I got home and I had no w water in the well. So then they had to go get us a water buffalo, which is a big plastic tank, 550 gallons, that they put on a rollback truck in the front of my yard with a hose running out the back to the uh, back spigot so we could have water inside the house because they drained my well. And, and I just want to mention that these people were ruthless and they will do anything they want because I told them not to do it and they did it anyway. So, you know, that, that goes to show you what, the, you know, what they're capable of doing. So we lived with this for maybe um, two months. They brought in two different well drillers that tried to drill us wells, but they, you know, they couldn't come up with any wells. They pulled, their main concern was trying to prove that it was my fault and not theirs. Because they kept on saying, oh, it's your well, it's your casing, it's your pump, it's your, um, uh, the pipes in your house, things like that. So then they finally, you know, it started to freeze up the water, so they gave, put a filtration system in our house. Not the one we picked out, but a cheaper version of it. And all it was was an add-on system was taking the, the color out of the water. It wasn't taking the real contaminants out of the water, and they just kept on adding on to it. There's a, a tank, uh, two separate tanks, one with bleaching water and one with alum and water that they mix together. Now, here you are. You're using chemicals to try to treat, you know, water that's coming out of an aquifer. I mean, come on. That water is supposed to be pure, you know. They contaminated the aquifer. Now they're trying to clean it up with a Band-Aid is all what they're doing. Um, they add it in. There's a carbon filter. There's another solid tank filter. There's a um, gas separator. There's uh, a ultraviolet light for the bacteria that it harbors. And, you know, just, it just goes on and on like that add-on system. We used that thing for almost a year. My daughter had eczema on her elbows. My son had it up and down his legs. 
My daughter had the highs. My wife had the highs from using the water. It would only the carbon filter that they were, that they used would only last like two months, and then all of a sudden they'd have to replace it again because the water was that bad. Um, we didn't. We had, you know, we had no choice. We didn't know what to do, so we just we thought, you know, we were going to be okay with it. Finally, the DEP stepped in. They, uh, they also found a lot of gas after one of the wells blew up. They didn't check for gas in the beginning there. I don't know why, because you could see the gas in the water anyway. But they finally put a uh, six-inch PVC pipe on our wellhead to vent the gas out so it wouldn't come inside the house. You know, I mean, so all you're doing is you're taking that, that gas and just putting it into, into the air, you know, and, and that's not a good thing. The DEP stepped in in October of 2009 and took all the wells offline in the Dimmick area that were contaminated because they said, this, we can't go on like this. We can't be d doing this again. So we've been, we've been with a water buffalo since uh, the end of October of 2009. It's been over a year now. We've been living with a water buffalo. They come and bring us water every day in a truck. That's how we get our water in the house. And they also, once a week, they bring us spring water to drink because we won't cook or, or, you know, we won't use that water for drinking or, or cooking. Now, this, you know, this buffalo tank, it's got, you look in the bottom of it, it's got all this kind of, it looks like sawdust in the bottom. I see bugs floating around in it and everything. You know, we've been back and forth battling this whole thing. The, in, the inside of our pipes inside the house were so clogged, they looked like uh, peanut butter in there. And, I mean, you know, it just, it just goes on and on. So finally, and, you know, for anybody... That, they, yeah, but they kept on saying, you know, we didn't do it. It wasn't us. Uh, prove it. Uh, go ahead and sue us. You're not going to win it anyway. And, I mean, it was a little funny that drilling began in August, and by September 11th we had a, you know, contaminated well. It was less than a month and we had it. And this didn't, and our well got contaminated. It, it isn't even a, um, a horizontal well. It's a vertical well. And it, and it happened during the drilling before even they did the fracking on it. The, case, the casing collapsed and contaminated the whole aquifer down there. So, um, so here we are. We're trying to do something about it. And all the people that are, are skeptical about what, what you can do about this does it really help? Does it really help to call, to write, or anything? And it does. I called John Hanger, who's the secretary of the DEP. We had a couple meetings with him. Nothing happened too much. I called him on the phone one day. This was after my son told me he's moving out of Gasland. He said he's had enough of it. He said he can't stand living there anymore with the water problems. So he's joined, he joined the Army because of this. That's another thing. I'll never forget that the gas company is breaking up my family, too. So that's another ruthless thing that they're doing by him moving out because it changed my, all my plans were, on, or were put on hold because of my contaminated well. I couldn't sell my house to move away. So then I called John Hanger and, you know, we just, I talked to him about the whole thing and I, and I said, you know, I'm not asking for me. I'm demanding a meeting t by tomorrow. And he did come the following week and I said, you come uh, like a half hour early and look at my place and we'll show you around. So he came, he came early. I showed him my house, I showed him the buffalo and all the things that were going on there. And he said to me, he says, how you explained it to me before did not do it justice. So he was a changed man from then on, you know. Then he started pushing for this water line. He told us, he says, my option would be to push for this water line. So now they wanna, they wanna, um, we wanna get a water line brought down to us. The DEP had three consent orders signed by Cabot. I mean, three of them that they signed. Nobody bent their arm. Nobody, you know, nobody was holding a gun to them when they signed it. They knew what they were signing, and they signed it anyway. Now they're trying to renege on it and say that they, you know, that they were forced, coerced into, into signing this, this uh, consent order. Well, this, well, all this happened to uh, get us a water line. And John Hanger finally uh, told him, he says, we're going to go get a water line and Cabot's going to be responsible for it. So they, um, they, the a water company that's supposed to be supplying water, it said it's $12 million, that's what it costs. And, uh, and Cabot's supposed to be uh, sp responsible for paying it back. Now, they, uh, they went to a, the water company went to a meeting in Harrisburg to try to... Um, get funding for it. It's a forgiv forgivable, forgivable loan that's a grant. So all of a sudden, up props all these people. 
and we have papers to prove all this. We have, people have signs in their front yard. Our neighbors have signs in their yard that say, enough already, no water pipeline. Our own town people. are opposed to our water line. They don't deserve clean water. Right. They're, they're opposed. They're fighting us on this whole issue, and, and they're, they set up this group. They had a meeting at the Elk Lake High School one night, and it was supposed to be a two-sided meeting. They come there, and all they did was they did all the talking. Every time we tried to talk, they wouldn't let us talk. And by the way, they had three armed guards on patrol in a school. Guns. With, right on their side. Guns on their side. Glocks on their side. You know, in a school. Now, I, you know, why would they have that, you know? They took full-page uh, full ads out in papers to, you know, to, to go against us, saying how it doesn't make any sense. You should do this. You should do that. What they, these people are saying, oh, that's just too much money. I said, what do you mean it's too much money? They're trying to say, oh, it's going to because the taxpayers are going to have to end up paying for it. Well, even if the taxpayers did pay for it, it would only be like $2 a person. But it's not going to be that way because the gas companies have fought and they're held responsible for it. you got all these businesses down here that are, that are fighting it. They're going against it. And they get in there, and here's the rumors they say. You guys had gas in your wells all along. Well, we have a pre-drilled test that shows we had no methane gas. Uh, they said, well, that's just naturally occurring gas. No, it's not. We have an isotope test which fingerprints the gas and shows that it did come from uh, production gas. Then they said, oh, well, you guys uh, are putting the chemicals in yourself to contaminate your wells. <laughs> I mean, it, this is our neighbors saying this stuff, you know. They're trying, to, they're trying to put the blame on us. And you know what? They're all funded by the gas company because what happens when you get neighbor fighting against neighbor? Doesn't it take the attention off the real culprit, which is the gas company? And that's exactly what they're trying to do here. I mean, this, is, this has gotten so bad, they had a company picnic uh, at the nearest town, and they offered free food. So, of course, everybody's going to go there, you know, to get the barbecue free food. I didn't go there because I was busy working that day trying to pay for my mortgage, which is worthless, my house. My wife went, and, we, you know, she carried a jug of water like that. And they must have been looking for her because an armed guard with a bulletproof vest on come up to her, walked up to her on school property. Again, it's a different school now. And he says, what do you have there? And she says, oh, it's my well water. Well, what are you going to do with it? Well, I'm going to drink it because Cabot says it's okay to drink. <laughs> and he says, well, give it to me. And she says, no. And he says, give it to me. And he grabbed her hand, grabbed it, with his, and, and pried her fingers until she finally let go of it. Now, we went to the state police about this, and they said that we couldn't do anything to him. I said, well, isn't that assault? And he said, no. She get him for harassment was all. I said, I said, what would have happened if she would have kicked him right back? Oh, she would have got arrested. <laughs> so here they are. I mean, they're the Gestapo. They're going to they're gonna take things in their own hands. They used to come into my house, Cabot now. One guy would come maybe once, uh, twice a week to go stick a little tube into, the, into our nice wellhead, and they would check for gas. They would do this twice a week by themselves. All of a sudden, right before this, uh, this press conference for the pipeline came out, two of the Cabot guys came walking down my driveway, and, all, and then another, somebody else was parked at the top of the driveway. A girl gets out of the car. She has a bulletproof vest on and a gun on her side. My wife hears all the commotion from the dogs and everything, goes to the front door, and here's this girl walking right down my driveway across my front yard over to my well. Never knocks on the door or anything. Now, what are you supposed to think when somebody's on your property with a gun? I mean, you know, I, that's not right. And so my wife said to her, what, what are you doing? So I'm, I'm here with them. Well, why? I'm here to protect them. Protect them? Protect them from what? She said, I want your name and, and who you're working for. Wouldn't give it to her. And she said, get off my property. You're trespassing. Said that about three or four times, and she would not leave the property. Well, they haven't been back since, but I'll tell you, I did hear the PR, which is George Stark for Cabot, got on the TV and said, if our employees feel threatened, they will be armed. Now, I mean, is this America or not? We have to take it back again. And, you know, this is a democracy. You know, we have to, you know, we can't let them take control. I mean, it's like 
the gas and oil companies are just taking over everything. They want to do anything they want, and they're getting, getting away with it. But we've got to hurt them big, and you, the only way you're going to hurt them, you're not going to hurt them by finding them. Finding them. They've been fined so many times down in Dimmick for all the uh, nasty spills they've done. And the one time was like $240,000. They said, that's nothing. They said, that, that won't even, you know, stockholders and everything. That's nothing. Don't worry about that. But what will hurt them is a litigation against them. We have a lawsuit pending against them right now, and that's going to hurt them because they're going to have to answer their, to their stockholders there about what's going on with Cabot. They, they've already had to plug up three of their wells. Now, you're talking millions of dollars to, to drill these wells and frack them. They had, to, uh, they had to plug three of them up already. They're not getting the gas off there anymore. And they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna pay, and everybody has to stick together on this whole issue because if you don't, they're just going to run over everybody and do whatever they want. So don't let them come up here and ruin your pretty countryside up here. Be really. Every, every time we come to New York State and we ride around, we see it. And, you know, if they ever hit the watershed water, how, can you imagine all those water buffaloes in New York City? I mean, how do you fill all those every day? You know, you couldn't do it. So, you know, you, your countryside is so serene, so pretty and beautiful, you know. I mean, we were ride, driving around Dimmick, and, and it, it, it makes us sick because it looks like a wasteland. It really does. I mean, until, you, until you've seen it firsthand, you just can't imagine what it looks like. Besides all the truck traffic, you'll go around the corner and there'll be a, a tanker coming right at you on your side of the road. It happened to us last night, last night going to the doctors. Come right on, right on our side of the road. We had to almost run off the road just to get away from them, you know. And they just barrel right on like it's nothing. And then they, they, wreck all, they ruin all the roads they, and they have all these new signs up saying, oh, they're helping the community out by rebuilding the roads. Believe me, they're not doing it for the taxpayers. They're doing it for themselves to get more, more trucks on the roads. That's all they're doing. So don't let them ruin your countryside, please. It's too beautiful there is, here. There is a new, there is a new um, ad in the paper, and I forgot. I left it at my car. The, the paper today um, talking about them. Our own supervisors, our own township supervisor oh, yeah. is against the pipeline. Yeah, Dimmick Township supervisors are against. They're going to... They're gonna, uh, fight us to like Montrose Borough, where the water's be, going to be coming from. They said they already hired a lawyer to fight they're in us. Litigation. They're going to be in litigation they're gonna, against um, the DEP. Yeah, they're going to go against the DEP and, and the water, water company. company. Now, I mean, what happened to you know uh, love your fellow neighbor and everything like this? And I heard all this stuff about a good neighbor that, that you know when you sign a lease and everything, they're trying to act. In, you know, they're trying to be a good neighbor. I've never, ever seen them try to be a good neighbor. They try to throw a lot of money out to, like, these different businesses, maybe like a library, they'll throw them some money out, you know. But when they tell me that they didn't cause my problem in my, in my well after they drilled not, not, you know, less than a 1,000 feet away from it, I know, you know, they're lying. And, and I'll tell you, they're not going to get away with all this lying. They're going to they're gonna be held accountable for it. So don't let them do it to you. Absolutely. They, they told us, no, um, they were afraid that they were going to use up all the exhaust of the water. First of all, they don't even own the water. The uh, PA, uh, American Water Company, owns, owns the water there. So they said they, they, yeah, so they said that we were going to use all the water up. We tried to figure it out. If we used 400 gallons for so many families, it, it would be like 8,000 gallons um, a day. And that's all. They're, they're leasing or selling or whatever you want to call it to the gas company 150,000 gallons a day for fracking. Here you go. Now, this clean water that they're putting in them wells, it's, that clean water is gone for good. So two to five million gallons in each well to be fracked. I mean, that, that water has gone for good. It will never come back again. Hi. I would like to take all of you people who spoke tonight and send you to, to Albany. And I would like to have everybody here and all the other communities that have people who are anti-fracking to go to Albany. 
And with the new governor coming in, one of the first things that should be on his calendar should be your group, this everybody who was here tonight speaking down there, and I would say everybody from Ulysses and all these other communities are meeting in small groups. Let's go to Albany. Now, this insidious what's been happening to you. Uh, this is Monday, this past week, Rochester Democrat and Chronicle on the entertainment page, page two, small paragraph. The Homeland Security Agency has charged Mark Ruffalo, R-U-F-F-A-L-O, who is an actor who is making a documentary on drilling, and they've charged him with terrorism. Now, that's the second time I've read this. So when you're talking about these people, these people are all the way to the top. Who the heck do you think those people are? Those are the oil companies who are controlling this country. They're evident uh, from from one of the meetings over over in this neighborhood. I got an article. I, it could have been I know always say her name wrong, but Pam from Ithaca, McChesney or something like that that ran for the legislature. She didn't make it. Sorry about that. <laughs> but what she said, what, one of the articles I got there was the fact that all of this information that we get is true. And that's the bottom line, true. And when you have people getting irate, yes, you can write letters, but you can also vote. Yeah. And Ulysses yeah. can vote and say, number one, we do not want water taken out of Cayuga Lake. And you can get people from Seneca Lake and the other areas to come in with you. It can start with a township, it can go to the county, and you can get organized. This is the whole thing. We talk, but we aren't quite organized. Sorry about that. Yeah, we need to allow some questions, and, and then we need to take a five-minute break. So I'll take one question, and then we'll do a five-minute break. I just want to say, uh, Craig and Julie, I've seen you before. Um, I'm really sorry for what you're going through. Thanks. My heart goes out to you. I've heard your story before. I'd never heard the part where uh, that security guard physically removed. Um, I, w I just want to say a couple things, not as opposed to a question. Um, they were right. The, the state police were correct, or he was correct, um, that it wasn't assault. What he left out is it is battery, um, okay. which is even better um, uh, from your perspective. Okay. Um, I recommend uh, the other thing I want to say to everybody in this room is uh, the state police, no matter what the officers rank, state police are not the arbiters uh, or even the, the appropriate interpreters of what the law is in your state or our state. Um, and when they tell you that there's nothing that they can do, that's not what you do. You, you, you go and you talk to your DA or whatever. We had a similar issue in Corning uh, at a meeting I went to the state. They had, without exaggeration, eight or 10, uh, this was a, an EPA uh, meeting uh, or DEC meeting. They had literally eight or 10 state police. Uh, they tried to take the position uh, that there, we couldn't have signs there. Um, and all it took was basically a lawyer telling them that wasn't the law. It was me, actually. <laughs> but, the, um, <clears throat> but, the, but the point is, my point is, you know, we can't accept what these people are doing. No. Um, they, are, they are arms of what's wrong. Right. And don't stop, you know, with the state police, go to the lawyers or whatever. You should be able to get a Pennsylvania lawyer who will help, I mean, you really should pursue that battery thing. If not, I'm Helen's husband, connect with her. We'll get you a Pennsylvania lawyer. Okay, One more? Quickie. This is really a question. Yes? Well, question for them. Okay. Um, I was shocked about something. I think even the people that are on Shale Shock and NIRAD don't know a lot about what happened with this discovery process. Can you talk a little bit about uh, that? Yeah, I forgot all about that. Yeah. Uh, well, one thing I do want to say a positive, the EPA is coming down to Dimmick tomorrow. They're supposed to be at my house like around 1 or 1.30 to do a study finally. That's where and they're going to do their case study. That's where they're going to do their case study in Dimmick yeah. tomorrow. So that's, that's, real, that's real good news for us, you know. They're going, uh, they're going into Bradford County in the morning and they're coming over to my place in the afternoon tomorrow. So that should be good. Um, yeah, this home uh, inspection, or did you say invasion, Bill? What'd you say? <laughs> Whatever you want to call, right? Okay. 
they, they call it a home inspection. It's part of their um, discovery part of the lawsuit. Cabot's lawyers went to the judge, and now they've, they tr we tried to stop it like three times, and finally a federal judge says, no, we're not stopping it. They can do it. What it is is th these people come in to your house. They're hired by Cabot. There's uh, like three or four people come in. One guy's got a camera filming the whole thing. Another guy has an air monitor in his hands all the time. Another guy's drawing sketches of your, of your rooms in your house. And there's the, the Cabot lawyers with them. They walk around your house and they look, they measure your house off, which, you know, I don't know what that's going to do, but they look for contamination. They're trying to prove that we're contaminating ourselves. We're getting sick off the stuff in our, in our own houses, okay? Um, I told my lawyers, I said, if they come to my house, they better have booties on their feet and they better have latex gloves on their hand because they're not touching anything in my house with their bare hands. And if they cough, they're going back outside and getting a mask on because they're not going to be in my <laughs> house like that. And they can't use my bathroom, so that was good. <laughs> but anyway, they were in there, and this, uh, we had somebody on our side. Our lawyer was there, and we had our f film crew there, too, with it, filming the whole Actually, thing. It was the producer from Gasland. Yeah. She came, and she filmed. Yeah, it, it, was a, it was the producer from Gasland. She filmed the whole thing. Now, here's how hideous and stupid these people are. The guy has the booties on, and he's measuring. I don't know. Maybe he thinks his foot is a... Uh, uh, f you know, his foot is actually 12 inches long because he kept on going like this with his feet and he'd, he'd take a step and he'd trip over his booties he had on. All day long he did that, you know? I mean, it's pretty stupid. You know? So we just stood there snickering at him the whole time and I would stare him down and everything and he'd get mad. Well, at the bottom of our bed is a little a wooden thing that you hang like a quilt on. Well, my daughter's got a, a little chihuahua with a little thing chewed on the leg of it. Oh my gosh, this guy thought he found gold or something. Because he got right down on that thing with the monitor to see what he could pick up off of it and had the guy film it with the, with the camera, I mean, for like five minutes, you know? And then there was other stuff on the walls. Like, you know how you roll up a wall with the paint? It, you might, your, your, your ceiling's white. You might get a little bit of that color paint on the, on the ceiling. Boy, they thought they found mold. I mean, they go like this, pointing over there, you know, over there, and they're doing all this stuff. So then they got into my basement. This is the good part. And, and, and he's looking at my filtration system. And he's, his hands are just going back and forth, looking at it and everything. He finds a valve open, open up on the gas separator. We haven't used it in over a year. Well, right away, film that and get, get a sample of that. We'll see what that is, you know. Why is that valve open like that? That's probably got mold or something, you know. So then one of the pipes that I cut off in the basement is all clogged. Well, my gosh, when he saw that, I thought he was, I, I didn't know what he was going to do. His hands couldn't get in his pocket fast enough. He was trying to get a knife out and, and, get, a, and get a little play, uh, a glass jar out. He got this thing out and he asked, they asked me if he could have a sample. Sure, go ahead and take it and analyze it. I don't care, you know. He takes it out of there and goes up to the lawyer and just holds it right in their face. Look what we got, look what we got, you know. Little they know, they just proved my case for me why we're getting sick because it'll contaminate it well. Well, next week they'll be back. And we'll yeah, back. oh yeah, that's right. Next week on, on the 12th, on, on, on the 12th, they're coming with this big machine with tracks, with tracks on it and everything. And they're going to drill six holes on my property that are six inches in, in diameter and 25 feet deep looking for contamination. That's what they're looking for. They're looking for contamination. So this is what we're up against. And, and we have nothing to say about it because the federal judge ruled in their favor on this part. But the good point is the federal judge ruled in our favor about all of our uh, charges against them. The Cabot tried to get them all dismissed. They didn't dismiss any of them. So they're, held, they're still held.